Good evening and welcome to Tuesday the 14th of June 2022 Ordinary Council meeting. One meeting opening, 1.1 attendance. Mr Benny. Uh, Mayor and Councillors, Councillor Alana Formoso holds an approved leave of absence for this evening. Thank you, Mr Benny. Item 1.2, acknowledgement of traditional owners of the land. Council acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of this land, the Bunurong people, and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, while also recognising their deep and continuing connections to climate, culture and country. We also pay our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and their elders and acknowledge their journey. Item 1.3, offering of prayer, reflection or affirmation. As part of Council's commitment to recognising the cultural and spiritual diversity of our community, the prayer, reflection or affirmation this evening will be offered by Mr Shamim Navavdi from the Spiritual Assembly of the Bahas Greater Dandenong, a member of the Greater Dandenong Interfaith Network, which Deputy Mayor Foster will read this evening. Please stand. O oh my God, I ask thee by the, thy most glorious name to aid me in that which will cause the affairs of thy servants to prosper and thy cities to flourish. Thou indeed hast power over all things. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Foster. We'll move on to item 1.4, confirmation of minutes of previous meeting meeting of council held on the 23rd of May 2022. Happy to move, Mayor. Move second by Councillor Dark, second by Councillor Milkovich. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? If there is no opposition, I declare the motion carried. Item 1.5, disclosures of interest. Mr Benny? No, no disclosures, Mr Benny. Thank you, Mr Benny. Two, Officers Reports, Part 1, 2.1, Documents for Tabling, 2.1.1, Documents for Tabling. I'm moved moved by Councillor Long, second by Councillor Garrard. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? If there is no opposition, I declare the motion carried. 2.1.2, Petitions and Joint Letters. Happy to move moved it, by thanks. Councillor Garrard, second by Councillor Trong. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? If there is no opposition, I declare the motion carried. 2.2, .2, statutory planning applications, 2.2.1, town planning applications, number 23, Dumblane Road, Noble Park, planning application number PLN 21 stroke 0092, uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Foster. I'd like to move that with an amendment, please. Do you want to read the amendment, please, Deputy uh, Mayor? Yes, so it's to condition 1.7 that the access way to be designed to be dished along its entire length and a curb installed along the entire length of the southern side of the access way with a minimum height of 150 millimetres from surface level. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Garrard. Are there any questions, Councillors? Is there any opposition? Yeah, is it opposition, Mayor? Okay, Councillor Dark in opposition. Uh, Deputy Mayor Foster. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, my understanding is that um, the residents alongside have some concerns um, about some flooding in, in that area. That area is prone to um, flooding when, when it rains and, and with excess water, um, and I believe that this will help um, curb that issue. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Foster. Uh, Councillor Garrard. Uh, Deputy Mayor, can I clarify, is the opposition to the amendment or is it to the um, item per se? Uh, Councillor Dark would be opposition in the, in the item. The to, the, to the amendment? It's the oh, amendment. Right. Okay, so it's not just the amendment. Can, Councillor Garrard, a second. Uh, so um, the uh, application fits within the um, planning guidelines and the um, alternate is resolving a water, excess water issue. Thank you, Councillor Garrard. Uh, in opposition, Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, I rise to oppose this application. This is uh, one which has been on Council's radar for quite some time and I just checked my emails before and I've been on Council such a very long time that I can recite back to emails from 2017. Uh, this is an issue for the residents nearby and a substantial issue. 
Mr Kakavas, who is a resident of Gelport, uh, has been talking to Council since 2017. Uh, the then Director of Engineering, Julie Reid, had undertaken a substantial review into the, the drainage areas after a nearby town planning application raised issues, and there's no question that the site has substantial flood issues. Uh, in the event of a minor amount of rain, the, the site holds a substantial amount of land, of water. Uh, Mr Cactivus, in his own backyard, has a sinkhole. Uh, at the time, former councillor Ros Blades and myself attended and actually had a conversation with him, and you can see the level of inundation on the site. My concerns come to the fact that the uh, proposed uh, amendment to allow that the site be dished and then to hope that an additional 150 millimetres is going to save the inundation of this site is just fanciful. The, the fact is that we are seeing, uh, with a lot of the environmental changes, substantial amounts of wet weather patterns. Uh, you only need to look at the last weather patterns the last couple of weeks to see the amount of rain <coughs> entering the site. Uh, Parkfield Reserve has a very large flood mitigation uh, along the border of the townhouses that are constructed next door to the reserve there, and that even holds a substantial amount of water. Whilst this application may fit with the criteria of uh, meeting all the town planning guidelines of building, I can't in good conscience support a development which would then force more and more water onto a next door neighbour's property, uh, potentially end up where there's a substantial amount of inundation and his backyard turns to mud, uh, and that's why I won't be supporting this. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Is there any further speakers? Uh, yeah, Councillor Garrett. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question of the uh, planning officer as sure. to whether a hydrology report has been um, conducted on this property? Mr Jackson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, the planning application has been assessed by Council's drainage engineers um, and as a, as a result they have required conditions to ensure that um, drainage plans and stormwater plans are provided to ensure that all stormwater on site can be retained on site and in addition to that we also um, have added the condition 1.7 that was referred to earlier um, to help alleviate any runoff onto the neighbouring site. So yes, it has all been considered as part of the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Any further speakers? If there's no further speakers, a right of reply, Deputy Mayor Foster. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, as I said, uh, as Councillor Garrard um, said earlier, that it does meet the requirements. Um, the neighbouring property um, I believe has nine townhouses, so this is this is proposed to have eight, um, and I believe that the, um, the the amendment does address the um, potential for flooding in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Foster. All councillors in favour of the motion, please raise your hand. Uh, Councillor Tron, Councillor O'Reilly, Deputy Mayor Foster, Councillor <coughs> Garrard, uh, Councillor Long, Emma Metti, Councillor Lim, Councillor Tan, and Councillor Milkovich. All against. Uh, Councillor Dark, the motion is carried 9-1. Councillors will move on to item 2.2.2, Town Planning Application number 15, Maple Street, Springvale, Planning Application number PLN 21 stroke 0177. Moved by Councillor O'Reilly. Second by Councillor Garrard. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? If there is no opposition, I declare the motion carried. Councillor O'Reilly. Thank you, Mayor. I've uh, gone through this application uh, very closely and I understand the objections raised uh, by nearby residents regarding, in particular, on-street parking in Maple Street. But uh, unfortunately, under Victorian government planning laws, there's not much that Council can do uh, for applications of this nature. Uh, a total of seven on-site car parking spaces are required and are included um, in the application. So while I've certainly listened and Council has listened to the objections, unfortunately, um, in this case, uh, as it does comply and has therefore um, gone through and been approved by Council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor O'Reilly. Item 2.2.3, Town Planning Application number 1 to 2 slash 1 to 3, Balmoral Avenue, Springvale, Planning Application number PLA 21 stroke 0619. Move, Mayor. Yep, Moved move. by Councillor Dark, uh, second by Councillor Lim. Are there any questions, uh, Councillor Garrard? 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, can I ask the appropriate officer about the reduction in car parking for this application? Mr Jackson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, the part of what the application is seeking is to increase the number of patrons permitted on site from 36 up to 110. This requires um, 33 car parking spaces to comply with the planning scheme. Um, this site being within the activity centre of Springvale um, doesn't have any spaces directly allocated to it as on-site spaces allocated to it. Um, however, council officers, including our traffic engineers, have reviewed the application and have identified um, that there are over 175 car parking spaces within easy walking distance of this site within the activity centre that are the vast majority of which are free after 5pm when this site proposes to operate. Um, in addition, there's many public transport options and other um, <coughs> modes of transport available. So from an officer perspective, we believe that the car parking reduction in this instance is appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Any further questions, Councillor Garrett? Any further questions? Uh, Councillor Lim? Just would like to comment on this uh, application. A uh, question? Oh, it's not a question, so no, it's a I'll, comment. You'll have an opportunity right? later. Oh, later. Okay, yeah. then. Thank you. Any further questions, councillors? Is there any opposition? If there is no opposition, I declare <coughs> the motion carried. Councillor Lim. Just would like to add on to Mr Jackson. To me, the car park is not an issue in that area because we have multi-level car park just across the road. That's 550 spaces at night time. And I talked to residents, or especially the business owners around doing that uh, uh, that, that shops seem to be they're quite happy with that because to bring more people to come to enjoy just socializing mainly karaoke okay for the, those people that come to get together as a family to sing along to catch up with each other the most important can bring a lot of people come to help the business owner nearby there especially underneath that karaoke okay. <clears throat> and the most important like the street for, uh, we call the street hot pot is very popular, very good one, but we need a lot of people to come along to, to see this uh, restaurant that, that nearby there, or four or five restaurants. They're happy with that. When I discuss with them, they say that's good to bring more people. But the most concern about that area is the lighting. The owner of Street Pot, Hot Pot, they said that we, every, every night there's fear about the, the street, Balmora Avenue in Buckingham Avenue, the lightning is very dark and it's very feel very unsecure but every time she closes her shop, you know, and go to the railway station. But the, regarding to the lighting, I've been discussed for many times. Hopefully our council can do something for the lighting in Springvale. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lim. Item three, question time public. Mr Benny. Uh, Mayor and Councillors, the first question this evening is from Pam Naylor of Noble Park. Pam has requested to Ask her own question if she's in the gallery, please. Doesn't appear as though Pam is with us, so um, I'll read it on her behalf. The recently exhibited long-term financial strategy referred to two open space acquisitions in 21-22. A, what were they? B, can the new open space, uh, can the new open space for our community webpage on Council's website be updated with them? Uh, Mr Jackson can respond. Mr. Mr Jackson. Uh, thank you for the question, Ms Naylor. Uh, yes, I can confirm that the two sites acquired for public open space during 2021-2022 were 61 Hayington Crescent Noble Park, which is the old scout site and has an area of 2,940 square metres, and the other site was 49 View Road in Springvale, which is a corner site with an area of 966 square metres. Uh, with regards to updating the website to include these sites, uh, yes, we, we will arrange this to occur in the next week or two as part of a wider update of this web page. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Mr Benny? Uh, the next question is also from Pam Naylor of Noble Park. Referring to the new open spaces for our community web page, is the design work on the two, uh, 200, on 218 Railway Parade uh, Noble Park Noble Park site still planned to commence in 22-23, and if so, in what month is the consultation expected to occur? Mr Jackson. Mr Jackson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, and thank you again for the question. Uh, the work currently scheduled for the future open space site at 218 Railway Parade in Noble Park in 2022-23 um, will involve the demolition of the building on site and the planting of grass throughout. This will allow the site to be used 
for open space by the community in, in an interim period, for an interim period while the design work for the ultimate outcome is completed. The dates for the demolition work and grass planning will be established in the new financial year once the due, di due diligence work and tendering for the demolition is complete. In terms of undertaking the work for the ultimate outcome for this site, uh, this work is not funded for 2022-23 and rather a further submission uh, for funding will be undertaken for the, year tw the year financial year of 2023-24. Community consultation will occur once the future works are funded and a draft design has been completed. Um, as part of a, the wider update of the web page that I referred to in my previous answer, we'll also update the status of this future open space as part of that work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Mr Benny? Uh, next question is from Tamara Kojic of uh, Dandenong. I've checked the Dandenong Community Hub page on the Greater Dandenong website regularly and it has had finalisation of business case and concept plans under review for six months now. In what month this year are the concept designs going to be finalised? Ms Budin can Ms Budin. Thank you, through you, Mr Mayor, and thank you for the question. Um, Council's requested additional concept plans for the Dandenong Community Hub be developed, featuring alternative layouts to the concept plan released for public comment in 2021. This work includes a detailed cost analysis of all alternative layouts in order to gain an understanding of the expected cost of all options being considered. The timeframe for delivery of this work has been adjusted accordingly. As soon as this work has been completed and the project moves to further consultation and detailed design, the project page on the website will be updated and all stakeholders will be advised. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bedin. Mr. Benny. Uh, the next question is from Claire Alvarez of Dandenong. When is the new consultation on the redevelopment of Foster Street going to occur, given the last one was short and not well promoted? Mr. Kearsley can respond, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Kearsley. Uh, thank you, uh, through the Mayor, and thank you for your question, Ms. Alvarez. I can advise that the proposal was not a council led uh, consultation process that was undertaken by Development Victoria along with Capital Alliance. Based on previous comments we've received from the community with regards to the short nature and type of consultation undertaken, we have uh, written to both Development Victoria and Capital Alliance outlining those concerns. Um, however, we are yet to hear back with regards to any response or any further consultation that those parties may undertake. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Kearsley. Mr Benny. Uh, next question is from Gay Guest of Keysborough. Uh, pointing out all things roads, Corrigan Road has become a patchwork quilt with all the digging and repairing to underground services, as has Chapel Road, where new road services are constantly being cut into because uh, whatever work has been done prior, it seems, is not up to the standard, and in go the tunnels again to fix and repair the problems. Road, re road surfaces are becoming muddy around these development sites. Why aren't the contractors made to clean the roads? In Warunga Avenue at the intersection of Bloomfield Road, too many cars are now parking either side of Warunga Avenue. They are a hazard on this blind corner when turning into Warunga. What can be done to make this area safe for all traffic? Cars and pedestrians by insisting cars park on their own property and not both sides of the street. Mr Kearsley. Mr Kearsley. Uh, thank you, Ms Guest, for the question. Um, through you, Mayor, what I can say at this time, due to the detailed nature of the question, is that we will have to respond once we have undertaken a number of inspections. I've asked the staff to inspect Corrigan Road and Chapel Road for an understanding of the condition of that particular road and also asked the traffic engineers to look at traffic and pedestrian issues on the other uh, roads that have been raised. Um, we will then, if necessary, follow up with developers but also other agencies such as South East Water. Unfortunately, um, there are times where these other uh, the developers or agencies actually do damage and dig up council roads and we are left with generally um, issues that we're not necessarily happy with, but um, there may be ways that we can address those with the developers in those particular streets. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Kearsley. Mr Benny? Uh, the final question this evening is all for, also from Gay Guest of Keysborough. Our democratic rights are being eroded and it is un-Australian. While residents have the opportunity to submit to C224G or C233G, there should be no correspondence being dealt with between state government and the council staff, directors or councillors, nor PLNs on the application register. 
This smacks that public consultation is a farce. The proposed towers will become the new tenement housing of the future, where investors will buy up and renters will be subjected to inferior living conditions right next to a railway line where every 10 minutes trains and freight trains will be commuting and directly opposite on an extremely bad corner. Another dense proposal is on the table. To reduce parking allocation for these dense builds by 66 per cent, to allow more apartments is just ludicrous and where the planning scheme lets residents' amenity and neighbourhood character down. Noble Park does not warrant any Capital Alliance type buildings on or near any of its heritage buildings. Noble Park is not on a significant waterway nor major arterial roads and needs a more sensitive approach to any future developments where heights should be restricted to four storeys only. A village suburb is potentially going to be turned into a ghetto through lack of real consultation and backroom deals. Why isn't Council fighting to preserve this suburb and, not, and do not blame State Government for this when you are actively engaging in the conversations? Mr Jackson could respond. Mr Jackson. Uh, through you, Mayor, and thank you for the question. Uh, the question appears to relate to two separate matters. The first of these matters relates to the Planning Scheme Amendment C224, which seeks to incorporate the adopted Noble Park Activity Centre Structure Plan into the Planning Scheme. This amendment is currently on exhibition until the 24th of June this year. The purpose of this amendment is to ensure improved guidance to ensure that the, approved, the improved guidance that the adopted structure plan provides will be able to be considered in future planning applications for this area. This matter is a council-led process. In terms of listening to and considering community feedback uh, as, through this process, when the now adopted structure plan was in development, significant community consultation occurred, and as a result of the feedback received, the heights were reduced for key redevelopment sites to better reflect the views of the community. Council is now seeking further comments regarding incorporating this adopted structure plan into the planning scheme and will again consider all relevant submissions. The second matter referred to relates to a proposed combined planning scheme amendment and planning permit application for the development of a six-storey building at 51A Douglas Street, which abuts the railway station. This matter is a DELT project and is also now on public consultation until the 1st of July. Council officers are currently reviewing the proposal and intend to make a detailed submission. I would also encourage any members of the public to do the same if they have any comments to make on either the Structure Plan Planning Scheme Amendment or the proposed development at 51A Douglas Street. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr Jackson, and thank you, Mr Benny. Councillors, we'll move on to item four, Officers' Reports, Part 2, 4.1 Other, 4.1.1, Community Partnership Funding and Sponsorship Grants. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Garrett, second by Councillor Long. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? I may just want to record abstention. Thank you, Councillor Dark. Uh, I'll call again any opposition. If there's no opposition, I declare the motion carried with an abstention from Councillor Dark. <coughs> Item 4.1.2, draft minutes of positive ageing advisory committee meeting, 14th of April 2022. Moved by Councillor Thank Lim, you. second by Councillor Long. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? If there is no opposition, I declare the motion carried. 4.1.3, leave of absence, Councillor Angela Long. Moved by Councillor Second. Garrard, second by Councillor Dark. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? If there is no opposition, I declare the motion carried. Item 4.1.4, list of registered correspondence to Mayor and Councillors. Moved by Councillor Lim, second by Councillor Garrard. Are there any questions? Is there any opposition? If there is no opposition, I declare the motion carried. Item 5, notice of motion. Uh, there are none. Item 6, reports from councillors, delegated members and councillor questions. Uh, councillor Trong. I don't have any report. Thank, thank you, you Councillor Trong. Councillor O'Reilly. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I've got a question for the uh, Acting Director of Planning, but firstly, uh, if I can just give some uh, context to it. Uh, being raised to me that a restaurant near the corner of Springvale Road and Balmoral Avenue applied um, for an alteration of their 
permit and they wanted to allow, which is a bit topical for this meeting, but they wanted to allow karaoke in the restaurant uh, for special occasions or private bookings, but it appears that uh, they've been knocked back uh, by this council and again this is third hand so I can't um, confirm it but uh, the reason that they say they were given was that the restaurant was too close to the residences in um, the number eight complex. Um, so I think um, Mayor, given that this council at this very meeting has approved a full-blown karaoke bar um, in Balmoral Avenue, Springvale. It is across the road from the number eight um, residences. Um, it doesn't make sense to me, Mayor, that uh, nearby resi residents at the number eight complex can uh, warble something like Summer of 69 by Brian Adams on their own karaoke machine in their own residence, their own apartment, but a restaurant um, that's done the right thing um, by applying for karaoke on their permit appears to have been knocked back with no negotiation or compromise from um, council. Uh, so, Mayor, not allowing karaoke in Springvale restaurant, it's just like a pub with no beer. <laughs> uh, it's unspringvalian. So um, I ask uh, the acting director of planning. Uh, I would ask the acting director of planning to consider, firstly, to consider reviewing this decision, and secondly, more generally, with uh, both residential and commercial developments in Springvale and other activity centres. Um, how will their needs regarding uh, allowing noise, activity, uh, the commercial interests versus the interests of you know, residents that are living in the activity centre, like how will they, they be balanced going forward um, in the context of council encouraging Springvale's nighttime activity? Mr Jackson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, thank you for the question. Uh, in terms of the specific planning application you're referring to, I will need to have a bit more of a look into that um, and come back to you with some more details as to what exactly has occurred with regards to that application. What I can tell you is, in principle, we generally support, seek to support nighttime activity in our activity centres, uh, whether it be Springvale, Noble Park, Dandenong, et cetera. Um, in terms of the second part of the question with regards to balancing the needs of businesses who are seeking to undertake nighttime activity versus the, protecting the amenity of residents. It is, it is a balancing act, um, but there are a number of, there is legislative requirements under the new EPA, EPA Act which require businesses to meet certain noise stipulations at different times of night. So that, that controls some of the amenity impacts. And it, also on top of that, in terms of planning applications, we are also able to introduce a number of measures such as acoustic reports, patron management plans, alcohol management plans as part of any planning permit conditions, which will, in addition to the EPA legislation, provide further controls around any detrimental impacts that may occur. But it is a balancing act, but we do want to promote some, acti some nighttime activity in our activity centres, but also needing, being mindful we need to protect those residents as well. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Councillor O'Reilly. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Foster. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, so since our last meeting, I've been to a few events, um, one of them being the opening of the new Trade Institute of Victoria with yourself just in Dandenong. Um, it's a great opportunity for increasing trade skills for local um, residents and, and further out. It's a convenient location and I believe the owners have, um, this is their fifth um, site in Victoria. Um, but it was also great to see, I was talking to one of the um, the female students and it was fantastic to see more women going into trade and um, strongly encourage women out there um, looking for a, a career or a change in career to consider trade um, and, I, and she had nothing but praise for it and she's one of three so I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, also attended the Hemming Street Precinct Community Consultation um, with yourself and Councillor Garrard. Um, it was, I, it, 
I love seeing the passion in our residents. Um, they're passionate about um, the issues in that Hemming Street precinct, particularly um, the proposed removal and replacement of trees. Um, and it was fantastic that they had that opportunity to voice their concerns um, with, with council and, and councillors present. So um, thank you to council for um, organising that. Um, also attended the Youth Leaders Meet and Greet um, just the other week and um, I just want to acknowledge that we have some of our youth leaders here so thank you for coming tonight um, and it's great to see a lot of young people taking an interest in our community and hopefully future councillors um, are in the room here. Um, I also attended the 60th Samoan Independence Day just yesterday. Um, the Samoan community are so welcoming and the hospitality hospitality that they present um, is just amazing and I had a wonderful time just at St James Hall here in Dandenong um, and I want to say a special thank you to the Samoan Community Advisory Council Victoria Incorporated for bringing it to Dandenong. I believe they've, um, they've run their Independence Day celebrations in the western suburbs so we do have a strong Samoan community here in the southeast, um, but I believe many came from the western suburbs as well. So, and and we're really um, impressed with um, with Dandenong itself. So it was a, a great opportunity for them to see um, our our municipality. Um, May I'd also like to acknowledge a local resident, um, Jessica Bagley, a Noble Park resident who won bronze last month in the International Boxing Association Women's Championship, which was held in Istanbul in Turkey. She was the only Australian who competed that won a medal. Um, and Jessica has been boxing since 2017, winning national championships in 2018 and 2019. And it is great to see local women in sport and even better to see um, a woman from the city of Greater Dandenong and no less um, the suburb of Noble Park um, to, to win bronze. Um, so, Mayor, could we please uh, send a letter to um, Jessica acknowledging her wonderful achievement, please? Happy to do that. Great. It's a wonderful performance, actually, from Jessica. Fantastic. And whilst we're on the topic of sport, I just thought I'd congratulate the Socceroos on um, qualifying for the World Cup. I think this is fantastic. Yes. Um, very exciting um, to, for those who stayed up or maybe got up very early. Um, it, was, uh, it was great to see. Um, our, our team get through. So, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Foster. Councillor Gerard. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to acknowledge our fantastic young ambassadors um, sitting with us today, a very impressive group of people. Uh, we had the pleasure of spending some time together and uh, it's great to see them here. And it's, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing them as leaders in our community in the not too distant future. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Sandra George, uh, our very own Sandra George, who was nominated on the Queen's List uh, for OAM, who is our um, manager of business, and acknowledge uh, what a fantastic um, acknowledgement that was for her. Through you, Mr Mayor, uh, I'd also like to say I attended the Hem Hemming Street uh, Tree Consultation. Uh, fantastic to see the community so passionate about the environment. Congratulations to the Council for listening. And uh, it's very heartening that the decision to um, remove 71 trees has been um, continuously put on hold um, and that the council has, um, has shown that they are listening to the community and working in uh, participation with the community. And it's really heartening to see that partnership come together. Um, my first question, uh, Mr Mayor, is to, uh, through you to Mr Benny regarding an update on the Council's advocacy regarding um, the advocacy against the uh, placement of a cemetery in Heatherton Road. Mr Benny. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, Council does continue to advocate very strongly uh, uh, against the proposal that we consider, or the Council considers, does not meet uh, the community's fundamental expectations for improved hydro hydrology, ecology, uh, environmental, social and cultural uh, benefits that might emerge from that particular site. That, that position is well known. But in addition to that, um, as officers, we have continued to uh, engage with the proponent for the project. Uh, we have sought to um, uh, highlight to the proponent uh, council's concerns uh, and perhaps uh, suggest that this is a proposal that should not proceed, but uh, the proponent has, um, within their right, decided to not accept that position at this point in time. 
Uh, Council has also met with the landowner, Melbourne Water, uh, and we are uh, pleased to hear that Melbourne Water share uh, similar concerns to Council, as you would expect, of the landowner and of the water authority uh, in this area. Uh, but Melbourne Water are obliged to uh, give the proponent uh, the appropriate opportunities to respond to their high-level expectations, again, around hydrology, ecology, environment, uh, social and cultural impacts. And finally, we have engaged with uh, DELP at the regional level, uh, who are not engaged at this stage uh, because there is no live application. They would become involved if there was an application. So in, in summary, can I just say that the advocacy uh, against this proposal is continuing and that we are hearing from those that are in positions to consider it, that they share council and the community's concerns. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Benny. Councillor Garrard. Uh, thank you, Mr Benny. And uh, we look forward to the day that we hear officially from the Trust that they are no longer pursuing um, that site. Um, Mr Mayor, my next question is, um, I have some questions relating to the Council's uh, uh, initiatives to reduce plastic. Um, what are we doing this year to get involved in Plastic Free July? What, and also, what is the status of our rollout of our council plastic policy? Uh, with council and community groups already planning events for spring and summer next year, they have all recently uh, got a copy of our plastics policy and now have to follow, follow it um, for events on public land. Is that correct? Mr Jackson. <laughs> Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, thank you for the question. I can confirm that Council is running weekly, weekly community workshops during July to support Plastic Free July. With these workshops covering issues such as the problems with single-use plastics, alternatives to single-use plastics, details on Council's plastic use policy, and also what we know so far about the upcoming State Government ban on single-use plastics. Promotion of these workshops will commence later this week. In addition, we're also looking to run a number of internal council activities to promote Plastic Free July um, across staff and councillors. Uh, in terms of the rollout of council's plastics policy, the implementation of this has been communi communicated to the community since May 2020. All event organisers for events on council land are provided with information regarding the policy and organisers are required to demonstrate compliance with the policy as part of their application to council. This will continue to be the case for events to occur next spring and summer and for all those going forward. To further support organisers, council staff are currently in the process of developing a set of resources to, to better help groups understand and adhere to the policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Councillor Garrett. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I have some questions regarding the status of the following actions in the Dandenong Climate Emergency Action Plan, uh, which were all meant to be completed by June. Uh, 2021. Firstly, the fleet transition plan was meant to be complete to transition our fleet to the electric and other low emissions vehicles. Is this now complete? And if not, when is expected to be completed? And if it is finished, uh, you know, can the public have a copy? Mr. Kearsley. Uh, thank you, Councillor. The, the work has been completed, but we're intending to brief Council at the CBS in early July. The question being if that's satisfactory, putting it out to further discussion with the community or completing the document uh, as a, it is completed now, but uh, that's a decision that we'll make uh, at the CBS in early July. Thank you, Mr Kearsley. Councillor Garrow. Uh, Mr Mayor, I had trouble hearing that response. Um, is the relevant officer's microphone on or am I going to? Um, it's on. Uh, the uh, can I confirm the transition plan is complete? Is that, was that your response? Mr Kearsley? Yes, it's complete up to the point where it will then be presented to a CBS for further comment by Council. Okay. Thank you, Mr Kearsley. Councillor Garrett. Okay, thank you. Uh, my second question is, um, Another item that was meant to be finished was a climate change community engagement and mobilisation plan. As a community engagement plan, I imagine it will be made public to the community. What is the status and when can we have it on our website? Mr Jackson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Your work continues on the community engagement and mobilisation plan, which was um, unfortunately suffered some delays due, due to COVID. Um, it is now currently intended to make this plan publicly available by the end of this calendar year. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Councillor Garrow. So, so we still have six, seven months to wait for that. Is that correct, Mr. Jackson? That is correct. If we can do it sooner, we will. But that's that's the aim at the moment. Yes. 
Thank you, Mr Jackson. Councillor Garrett. Uh, I would ask why it's a year and a half late, but we might, might move on. Um, finally, there, what is the status and timeframes of the feasibility report on the options and timing of the accelerated phase out of natural gas from all council facilities? Mr Jackson. Uh, thank you for the question. The feasibility report and the options and timing for the accelerated phase, phase out of gas from all council facilities um, continues to be worked on. Again, this was unfortunately delayed due to COVID because of the inability to undertake site investigations during that COVID period. Work has commenced, though, with regards to the desktop energy audit and site inspections will be conducted within the next month. It is then anticipated that the final report will be tabled for Council's consideration again by the end of this calendar year. Thank you. Mr Jackson, Councillor Guerra. It's going to be a big finish to the year, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, Sorry, is my question time. Um, we know that people with a disability are more vulnerable to extreme climate events uh, for a range of factors such as housing and the need for transport. Uh, due to um, what, are the, what council plans are in place to make sure that people with a disability are supported in the event of extreme weather events? Ms Boudin. Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Thank you for that question, Councillor Garrard. Um, Council's emergency management team maintain a vulnerable persons register in collaboration with Victoria Police so that in the case of an emergency, the residents on this register can be contacted to ascertain if they need any further assistance. In the case of a specific climate event that requires immediate action, such as evacuation, Council would check our list of clients to identify those who may need greater assistance as well. A number of our community buses have wheelchair hoists and we have arrangements in place under our emergency management plan that these can be called on for immediate assistance. Um, more broadly, Council delivers a range of proactive public education approaches to support community emergency preparedness. Um, and Council's also taking part at the moment in the South East Council's Climate Change Alliance Assessing Community Vulnerability to Climate Change project, which is being funded through the Mindaroo Foundation. And this project aims to enhance community resilience to the impacts of climate change and includes an assessment of community vulnerability to climate change and community resilience development trial projects too. So that's one project to watch out for as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Boudin. Uh, Councillor Garrett. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. My final question oh. is uh, the date for the Keysborough South Community Hub um, going out to tender. Mr Kearsley. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Through you, Mayor, I can um, indicate, as previously, that we are aiming for the, um, the month of June, the end of June. As soon as I have a particular date or as soon as the tender goes out on our e-portal, which is the way that we now ex uh, make these documents accessible, I can inform Councillor and all of Council at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Kearsley. Councillor Garrett. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Councillor Long. Thank you. First of all, I'd also like to congratulate Sandra George on receiving an OAM on the Queen's birthday list. I will personally congratulate Sandra at a breakfast meeting tomorrow morning, which I will be attending. These are some of the events that I have attended since my last formal meeting. On the 24th of May, I attended the DMPL meeting at the Danong Market. 27th of May, I attended the Reconciliation Week celebration for schools, school aged children at the fire pit at Springvale Community Hub. That afternoon, I attended the Reconciliation Celebration for Youth, also at the fire pit at Springvale Community Hub. 6th of June, I attended the Youth Leaders Meet and Greet with Youth <coughs> Ambassador and Councillors, and I'm pleased to see them in the gallery tonight. On the 7th of June, I attended by a team's the Road Safe Advisory Committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Long. Councillor Lim. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> On Sunday, the 29th of May, I organised Buddhist flower ceremony with Cambodian community. And I just would like to thank Mayor Jim Mamati, Councillor Lloyd Trum, and also especially <clears throat> Mr John Benny, uh, attended that flower ceremony. It was very successful and we raised over 150,000. And this morning I had a meeting also with Director of Monash Health and his staff to come to see me. And he told me and he said thank you to the Cambodian community that raised over $700,000 uh, 
up to now, over $700,000. Thank you for Cambodian committee and so many other committee that donate to Monashal. On Monday, the 30th of May, uh, 10 Freedom Day Club with uh, Mayor, Councillor Jim Mehmeti on their, on their 14th anniversary, <clears throat> and also with Mr. John Wells, President of RSL, and also Mr. Vladimir Nago uh, Nagomi. Yep. On Monday, the 6th of June, I had a meeting with uh, Ms. Ms. Taylor Buden and also Jim DeWine regarding to homeless people. They seem to be have no other solution. I hopefully I'm going to have some answer, uh, some uh, solution later on regarding to homeless. My concern is very, very severe at the moment. I feel like they might do something bad to Springwell or maybe they feel sorry for them. They just sleep you know, under the cold weather like this. You know. And also on that day we meet a uh, youth leader and also youth ambassador as well. Thank you for coming today. And on Tuesday, the 7th of June, I had a meeting with Springwell Community Hub Committee with Claire, Clara Yip and Sarah Hill, etc. And we have a good discussion regarding to plan, uh, strategic plan 2025 and also action plan renew 2022, yeah, 2020 and 2022. On Thursday, the 9th of June, I meet with uh, Mr. Matt McNally. He's a communication manager. He come to me on a regular basis just to discuss about Springwell Boulevard. And he informed me again, likely the Springwell Boulevard is going to finish somewhere the end of July or probably can be early, the end of June. I'm happy with that. And also I inform uh, uh, Mr. Sean, um, Sean Lean. He's a minister of uh, local government. And when I went to what we call the uh, Salvation Army Multicultural Launch with uh, Mayor John Mehmeti as well, Jim Mehmeti as well. And he really uh, very happy and very impressive regarding to the, the progress of Spring Valley Boulevard. Therefore, this Thursday we're going to come to visit Spring Valley Boulevard in early in the morning on, 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 in Spring Valley Boulevard. And also on that day, I met uh, Helen Beckman regarding to uh, business owner in Springwell. I would like her to help business owner as much as possible. And she agreed with me, especially the, the hot pot, street hot pot. And she asked me to send the video clip for her. And she's so exciting to see all these, uh, like similar to sushi trend. Yeah, conveyor belt, very, very good. And I, but I already had a bit of chance to have a dinner with <clears throat> and that restaurant as well. And also I tried to coach that business owner how to make her business even better. And uh, the only one uh, concern she concerned about is the street light in front of her shop and plus other uh, restaurant they concern as well. And uh, Helen Beckman, she informed me that tell, uh, she going to inform other business owner as well that the council have some fun to give to the business owner to go for training for free. That will be, 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 be paid by the council, I think, for that. And uh, that's about all for me. And just would like to ask some questions regarding to the shop, that the outdoor dining, you know. Recently, there's two shops have been vandalized, the outdoor dining. If like that, is that the business owner have to pay for, or as a council have to pay for, or we going to install another one for them? Thanks. Yes. Mr. Kisley? No, three well. There's two shops. They've been vandalized. The, the outdoor Mr. Dining. Councilor, Mr. Kisley, please. Um, thank you, Councillor Three. Mayor, I understand those are the recent photos you sent through over the weekend. Um, my understanding is that they were damaged by um, trucks backing into for deliveries. So we are undertaking some further work to identify whether or not they should be relocated some further distance away so that it doesn't happen in the future. Uh, and I should have an update with regards to who pays, um, but it's probably likely that council will, in this case, if they are damaged by um, trucks with, we believe, tow bars. So that's something that we're looking into. Thank you, Mr. Kisley. Council Lim. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kisley. The next question is uh, homeless people. You know, could we have any possibility to to talk to said government by take all of them to quarantine center, like in Victoria, we have a big quarantine center, and also we can send them to Darwin. Darwin have a big, huge 
uh, uh, <laughs> quarantine center that I went to Darwin last year is amazing, but I don't think we use that center anymore. Can we send all these homeless there? At least they have a proper home to stay. Otherwise, army reserve, or is it possible? <laughs> uh, yep. Mr. Benny? Um, Mr. Mayor, this is a very serious and uh, sensitive matter that um, I don't think anyone is oblivious to. Um, as I've indicated, and Ms. Budin has indicated, and others have indicated, um, we're taking these matters extremely seriously. Uh, we consider the, uh, the welfare of all of the individual homeless people above anything else, uh, but we also recognise that these are matters that need to be addressed in all of our activity centres, not just Springvale. So we are strategically <coughs> and with a degree of uh, urgency uh, seeking to deal with all these matters, but we're doing so in the most sensitive and careful way uh, that we possibly can. We hear the councillors' suggestions, uh, but we will always be guided by um, organisations who are expert in this field. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Benny. Councillor Lynn. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, regarding to the outdoor dining, if you're concerned about the car reverse and hit the outdoor dining, can we change the car park to parallel car park instead? <laughs> I know it's going to lose some car park but we have no other alternative rather than you know, some car probably reverse and hit the multi uh, outdoor dining. And I believe that what we long, the, out, uh, the multi-level car are going to fish you know, in the very near future. But I don't know how long it takes because this for my observation. They try to fish, they try to do something in one day and they stop for one week or something like that. And at the moment, just put on hold by two weeks already. Is that their procedures have to cut the concrete and have to leave for another week or two? I, I don't know what's going on there because I'm very naive in that sort of uh, construction. Would you need one can give me some answer, relevant officer? Thanks. Mr. Kisley. Uh, thank you, Councillor. With regards to the first question, um, it would not be viable at this stage with regards to impact on traders to uh, remove the parking and put parallel, the significant loss would be detrimental, we would think, to the, to the centre itself. We think that an easier way to do it is, if we have to, is to simply relocate some of the um, glass uh, screens, maybe a couple of millimetres, 100 millimetres further out. So we will investigate that, but we certainly wouldn't want to be encouraging any loss of parking on street at this particular point. We think that's perhaps an overkill to what we would need to do. With regards to the issues around the concrete that is part of the Capital Works program that we are doing, I'd have to take that element of that question on notice in terms to go to the project manager to find out the particular details in the question. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Keesley, Council Lim. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mr Keesley. Just final one is not a question, it is just uh, to would like to support Mr. Sean O'Reilly, Councillor O'Reilly, that regarding to the current OK. To me, regarding to the noise, to me, I come across number 12A, Balmoral Avenue, Window Club. They make so much noise for months and months, and the residents nearby there, they complain to the EPA, to our council, they keep saying, oh, not my problem, to the police, not my problem, didn't turn up either. At the end, they came to me instead, and I decided to see the owner of the business, personally, I asked him to put himself in those uh, elderly uh, shoes, and he understand that, and by about 9 or 10 o'clock, he reduced the noise you know, of, of his, uh, uh, his uh, speaker or whatever. And what, what it did, it did very well, and also the business owner, or especially the resident, came to thank you to me, and I went back to say thank you to the business owner as well, and he's so happy with that and he offered me even a special free meal if I organise my team to come to, <laughs> to, uh, to have a meeting or, or training, whatever, and he gave a special discount as well. Seem to be, if as a council, if we can educate them how to, as a business owner, Kara, okay, like, like, like uh, Councillor O'Reilly mentioned, if we can educate business owner by 9 or 10 o'clock, can you reduce your noise to a minimum as possible and close all the windows? I think I don't think any issue about the noise at all because EPA police never done anything anyway. Might as well we as a council try to educate the business owner instead. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lim. Uh, Councillor Tan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, firstly, I would like to share a great news. 
Um, so thank you to the, um, the city of um, our city improvement services, business engineering and major projects team for their great work. They just completed the um, Patong Court, which is um, one of our um, my capital work program I put in from last term. So this is completed. This is at Ross Reserve, which is next to the community uh, normal park community centre. Um, so great work, guys. So thanks for that. And it's um, available for public to use from start from today. And if anyone doesn't know what patong means, which is the French um, ball game, so it's similar to the bowl, the bowling game. Um, my question for tonight, firstly, um, through you, Mr. Mayor, regarding to the Leonard Avenue um, Buckley Street streetscape, um, since the redevelopment consultation has been um, completed end of May, so um, just to the relevant officer. What is the next process on this project? Thank you. Mr. Kearsley. Um, thank you, Councillor. Usually after the consultation, it would be the completion of the design and out to tender, but I'll get some more confirmation of the particular dates and times and the process for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kearsley. Councillor Tan. Thank you. Um, next question, just regarding to um, the consultation of the C224. Um, and the C233G, which is talking about the rezoning of the Noel Park Activity Centre, the amendment of proposal to um, rezone nine site based on our Noel Park Activ Activity Centre structure plan. Um, I believe the exhibition consultation will be closed on Friday, the 24th of June. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, could you please, um, just a question for, for the relevant officer, could you please provide the process after the exhibition and the timeline? Thanks. Mr. Jackson. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the steps after the exhibition period closes will be that officers will review the, um, all the submissions that are provided. We'll then consider whether we need to make any change or recommend any changes as a result of that. And then we'll bring a report back to council for council to ultimately determine the way forward, whether we need to um, seek a planning panel to um, hear any outstanding submissions that we can't resolve or whether we go directly to the Minister to get the Planning Scheme Amendment gazetted. So ultimately a Council report will come back to councillors uh, in the coming months. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Councillor Tan. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Tan. Councillor Milkovic. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a couple of questions. If I could get an update from a relevant officer regarding uh, a question from one of the residents in regards to a poor lighting on Carlton Road shops, and I think it's 108 Carlton Road, obviously at night. That, and I've actually went there myself the other day, and it does seem to be a bit darkish, sort of after, after dark, so I'm not sure if we can get a quick update on that, please. Mr. Kearsley. Uh, thank you, Councillor. We've just recently done a whole raft of um, audits with regards to lighting, so it may be included in that, so I'll get that, take that on notice and I'll get some information back to you. Thank you, Mr. Kearsley. Councillor Milkovic. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Again, to the relevant officer, have we as a council formulated some sort of a plan in regards to all these safety issues, homelessness issues in, in, in the city of Greater Dandenong as, as a whole as to what approach we're going to take, a strategic approach, any approach at all, or is it just sort of few and far between tossing and, and, and sort of throwing to and from the agencies and whatnot? The situation is quite critical. I've got to say, as one of the employees for, from the businesses who is quite affected by this, not personally myself, it's not getting better at all, and the, the recent, in the last two weeks, there's been three incidents where all the or vast majority of the windows were smashed on two different occasions, and then Dandenong Plaza was also vandalised. This is not sending a good picture about what Dandenong is and what it should be. And I'm just wondering how long will it take for, for us and for the government services agencies, police force? I mean, I can't remember last time, and this is not directed, directed at the council, I can't remember last time I've seen police officers walk down the streets of Dandenong. Can we ask the police force to actually send some patrols to actually walk the streets? Because I haven't seen any, and I'm in Dandenong every single day, day in, day out, and I can't remember last time I've seen a police officer butt for being stopped someone and issuing you know, speeding fines or whatever fines they're issuing. But we, we need to address this, and we need to address it fairly quickly before Dandenong starts going back to where it was five years ago, which was dead. Thank you. Mr Benny. Uh, Mr Mayor, I can only respond to the question, really. I, I, I'm not uh, a spokesperson for the Victoria Police and can't really respond to the, uh, uh, the later observations. Uh, as I think I've said on previous occasions and um, at briefings of Council, it's the former, not the latter. It's, uh, we do 
uh, actually have a strategic approach in mind. Uh, we wouldn't say that it's the strategic approach that shouldn't be reviewed and modified and adjusted to suit the circumstances, but it is a strategic approach. Uh, and we are, it's certainly not an ad hoc reactionary approach, albeit we do acknowledge that there are problems on, um, in our activity centres that need to be dealt with and dealt with as a matter of, matter of urgency. The problem becomes that there is a, a number of agencies that are involved in these matters. Uh, principal among them in our um, uh, view is the Victoria Police uh, and the state government through its various departments, but in addition, uh, housing agencies. And of course, the council has an important role to play as well. Uh, so we've um, uh, had numerous discussions uh, and I'm not in any way trying to send a message that we're, we're, there's too much talk and not enough action, but there is uh, discussions that are being held between all agencies uh, and the Mayor and I um, this week are hoping to meet with the local member uh, to bring to her attention the concern of this council uh, about the current uh, situation and we hope that through the local member we'll be, we will be able to um, uh, engender her um, support for us to separately approach uh, Victoria Police organisations, uh, housing organisations uh, and the relevant state uh, government departments to come together, to work together to deal with this. Um, Hemming Street is an ongoing um, is, is work in progress, has been indicated. That, that was a, an indication of a strategic response to the specific issues experienced in Hemming Street. Uh, the ones that Councillor Milkovich highlights are somewhat different, but they can, should still and could still be addressed uh, in a strategic way, and, and, and that's the, uh, the way that we intend to go about it, Mr Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr Benny. Uh, Councillor Milkovich. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr Benny. All I wanted to do is just maybe make a suggestion. If, if we can, and, and, and I agree with you that approaching the local member, Gabriel Williams, is, is the right thing to do, because at the end of the day, the state government is probably the most powerful of the whole lot that can actually instigate some sort of a response to this, whether that's creating a, a task force or an organisation that deals with these things, because what seems to happen is that we go from council to police, from police to ways, from ways to this to that, and the problem seems to linger and never get solved. So I hope that the local member can actually initiate some sort of a change in that direction. So thank you very much for that. Um, a further question to a relevant officer. Could we get an update? This issue has been going on. It's not a major issue, but it is an issue for, for the residents down at Cardinia Close. There's an illegal shed that's been erected on what we now know is the council land within the police paddocks, and it's been sitting directly opposite, and, and this has been going on for, like I think, about a year and a half now. Could we get an update from someone as to when that illegal structure will be removed? Uh, the residents have complained. The emails have been sent back and forth, like I said, ever since I got elected, but it somehow got lost in the system translation. Thank you. Mr Jackson? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Yes, I'm happy to follow that up tomorrow and see where that's at and get back to you from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Councillor Milkovich? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Uh, could I also get an update? I'm actually, following a really uh, positive meeting, an uh, on-site meeting with, uh, with one of the officers, uh, Mr Khan, could we get a quick update on just a projection of the time when the, the two speed humps in question on McPhee's Road are going to get rectified? Just, just in the interest of, of residents, like I said, I know that Mohammed did confirm that the work's been planned, but just rough timeline. Mr Kearsley? Uh, yeah, sure. No problem. We can find out the particular dates of that and advise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Kearsley. Councillor Milkovich? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr Kearsley. Um, another question. Sorry, I'm all about questions tonight. I know reports are... I've read the report the other day that FOGO waste, food waste recycling facilities in Victoria had a capacity and are not taking or producing any more compost or can't take any more compost. I was wondering what is the response now? What's the step forward now? We've gone through the process. We, we've issued the kitchen caddies and, and people have taken it, taken it on. I'm, I'm certainly on my family is taking it on. But now it seems to be the case where this is all going back to the landfill again because all the capacities are all the facilities are at capacity. Is there any change to that? Is there any movement from the state government? What what is what's the next step? Thank Mr. You. Kearsley. Uh, thank you. I'm aware of that particular article. That was predominantly northern and western issues. We we're not facing those same particular issues. We're not getting any feedback from the composting services or any or where we're taking, but we are 
we are very cautious of the, the nature of the waste industry. Uh, it doesn't take much for suddenly um, a couple of them to not be productive or not be efficient. So we're certainly keeping an eye on that and we can provide um, an update to that in the coming weeks. We are intending to bring the draft waste strategy to Council probably in the next couple of months, so we can certainly provide an update when we do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kisley. Councillor Milkovich. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kisley. That's great to hear. I, I was a little bit worried that, you know, we've gone through all this process and the residents have really taken the, the challenge of recycling really well and now we're back to square. So thank you for that. It's great to, great to hear that we are still on track with that. Um, another question to a relevant officer. Regarding the Lonsdale Street parking, what is the plan after the July 1st when the parking will apparently become paid again or the signage at the moment directs that the parking's free? But only up until the July 1st of, of this year. What is the plan? Is it going to be paid, unpaid, limited, not limited, reduced, increased? I mean, residents are asking. They're not even sure now what's going on. And also the business owners would like some sort of a certainty as to what's going to happen because, you know, if the limits change or if the fees change, that will also going to affect the business. Obviously, this is all in light of trying to make sure that then you know, we don't go back to three, four years ago when it was quite dead. It's, it's, it's starting to get alive and it's getting better and better. I want to make sure that we keep the momentum of Lonsdale Street going. So is there any news on, on what might happen, transpire after the 1st of July with parking? Thank you. Um, Mr Benny. Uh, look, we'll, we'll take that question on notice. It's an important one and we want to get the answer right. The, the decision that's been made by Council is that parking will be reintroduced into Lonsdale Street. Um, that doesn't mean that it happens from 1 July. Uh, what we want to get right, I guess, is the the phasing and the reintroduction and the communications and all of the things that you've raised. Um, Mr Bosman, I'm sure, has a plan for how he would like to approach all of that. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll um, and he's not here tonight, as we know. Um, so we will get those details and we'll share those with uh, all councillors and, and I think in due course, clearly uh, all um, business interests uh, in the activity centre. So it needs to be a phased and structured uh, reintroduction um, so it's something that everyone understands and comprehends and as you've also heard we endeavour to take an educational approach to changing parking conditions so the last thing we want is to introduce the change and then find that um, any breaches uh, are resulting, resulting in enforcement, uh, uh, something we would prefer to avoid. Thank, thank you, you, Mr Benny. Councillor Milkovich. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Benny. Could I please ask, once uh, that plan is formulated, that we maybe talk to businesses that way, because at the moment there's a fair bit of uncertainty as to whether the parking officers patrol the time limits or, you know, I know the disabled parking spots, loading zones are, are patrolled and that's fair enough and clear ways and no standing zones. But businesses are just really not sure what to advise their clients as they walk in. They go, well, is the parking, you know, for two hours, is it not, whatever. Can we somehow maybe organise one of the council officers to talk to businesses and just let them know what it is? So when the clients walk into the business, they can say to them, well, look, you can park for two hours or one hour or whatever the case might be. or really you can park all day just to help out with, with the process thank you uh, mr jackson uh through you mr mayor yes once we've uh, made a final determination on the way forward i think a promotion promotional activities including contacting business business owners would be the best way forward so i would agree that that's how we should move forward thank you mr jackson councillor milkovich uh thank you mr mayor thank you mr jackson and a final one for tonight i was reading a report seven news report regarding the the energy crisis that we are facing that we know we're facing i was wondering does the council have in light of these cappings on the wholesale prices of electricity and gas and coal and whatnot a lot of the plants are apparently coming offline putting a strain on electricity grid now i know that's not obviously a council problem however do we as a council have some sort of an emergency plan when these things happen and, and residents who are most vulnerable all of a sudden haven't got any heating in their place, haven't got, you know, gas heaters come offline and they're like 80, 90 years of age. Is there any kind of emergency plan as to what we're going to do, how we're going to help these people survive the winter? Because I can tell you it is ferocious this year. I, I can't remember in my 24 years in Australia that I've ever felt this cold for that many days in a row, particularly with the rain coming in. I understand we've got to go green and renewable. However, we need to keep these people also from freezing. And, and do we lobby the state government? Do, do we provide any kind of emergency contingency plan or anything of that nature or, or what? Thank you. Ms. Budin. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for raising that really important issue and one that we take very seriously. Um, I'm sure there's more that can be done, but at this stage, I can advise that um, 
Council is currently sharing information with our residents on Victorian government energy grants to assist with heating and cooling costs. So that's something that's online and available at the moment. And we're making sure that our residents are aware of that. Um, as to any further matters, I'll, I'll take the rest on notice. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boudin. Councillor Milkovich. Uh, thank you. Just a, just a complimentary that I, I know that we do correspond with other agencies and there's obviously reliefs and, and off payments. I'm talking about a, a, a actual fact where the gas is shut off or people that only have electric heating and the electricity comes off and they're in their 70s, 80s, 90s with no family around, nothing at all. Do we have a plan to help these people out at all in an emergency, in the case of an emergency? Who, do, who can they contact? Can they contact the council to be forwarded on to someone else? Or this can potentially, in my eyes, be quite a bit of a problem. Like I said, if, if you're young and fit and whatever, you can go to Daniel Plaza and sit there for six hours. But if you elderly, it might be a bit of an issue. Uh, Mr Benny. Thank you. Uh, yes, again, Mr Mayor, I think uh, best we take that question on notice. It is, uh, as Ms Boudin said, a very important question. Uh, I'm most familiar with the fact that we have a heat wave plan. So in times of, you know, high, um, in, in very hot days, we have strategies for dealing with uh, uh, um, our older citizens or senior citizens in the municipality in terms of giving them relief from the heat. Uh, I'm not quite, too, quite sure that we've necessarily uh, thought about the other end of the spectrum in terms of uh, very cold days, but I think some of the principles of that strategy could be very, very similar. Uh, hence, though, the need to take the question on notice to just clarify whether we're co covering both uh, extreme heat events and possibly uh, cold events as well. So, Thank you, Mr Benny. Councillor Milkovich. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. That's all. Thank you, Mr Benny. Uh, Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, my first question this evening is to the Director of Planning and Amendment, or Acting Director of Planning and Amendment. Um, I've had a, a couple of emails which I forward on to do with the parking and, and the substantial amount of unregistered cars being stored along Short Street in Dandenong, round through Attenborough and onto Bennett Street. Um, there's a lot of them, a lot of them are dismantling, they're leaking oil, there's just been, it's turning into what looks like a war zone. Um, I just want to find out whether we could have planning compliance go out and have a look and uh, with the other teams as well to see what options we have in terms of dealing with unregistered cars being stored either on um, common on common land, uh, on the street, in the streets uh, or in driveways. Mr Jackson. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, yes, there are options that we can undertake for unregistered vehicles parked on public roads. I think the best way forward is to get our officers to go and have a look on site and see what's happening, and then we can report back as to the way forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Jackson. Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, my next question is for the Director of Community Services. Uh, it has to do with the Lawn Bowls Club leases, which I've been uh, privy to some text messages from some uh, pretty angry residents. The, uh, there's been a lot of confusion to do with the way in which councils' leases are operating with the Lawn Bowls Clubs. Uh, I'm aware that there's some that are privately owned, such as the Dandenong Club, but those that are council-owned in terms of our Burden Park, the Keysborough Lawn Bowls Centre on Shotland Road, which is in my ward, uh, and the other ones in Noble Park, there has been, I believe, an uplift in where the uh, rent has been sitting, and there's been a lot of distress for clubs that believe that they've had to sign it in terms of duress, uh, not being able to operate on, from the ground where they are. Um, there was a recently a bit of conflict because it, it came to light that I believe Burden Park has refused to sign their lease and basically said to council, for lack of a better word, shove it. Uh, and Keysborough signed the lease and they're upset that they're paying a substantial lot more money per annum. Uh, the second part to that question as well was that they, uh, with the changes to the policies as well, particularly around the advertising and the rights there as well, Keysborough Lawn Bowls Club is concerned that they're losing quite a bit of money from uh, local community support that they previously had, which has now been outlawed. If we could please just have some information provided on that to all councillors and a uh, meeting organised to the Lawn Bowls Club as well. Thank you for raising that concern, <coughs> Councillor Dark. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, uh, yes, we will arrange a meeting with the club and um, we'll take that on notice and provide you with an update. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Dean. Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. My next question is for the Director uh, of Engineering. The Wachta Resort uh, boardwalk has been something that has been funded by this council some time ago. I'm aware that there's been substantial delays uh, with originally it was getting the pylons in and then it was supplying materials and things were being prefabricated and we've just come to a complete standstill at the moment. Um, I'm getting quite a few messages from some residents on social media about exactly what is going on given that the water level is still draining out uh, and it's turning into a, a quagmire. Uh, can we please get an update on what is going on with the delays, and two, how much longer delays are carried out before uh, Council looks at exercising whatever options are available under a potential contract breach? 
Uh, Mr Kearsley. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Yes, I can certainly seek an update with regards to that. I am aware of the delays with regards to particular materials. Uh, it's all COVID related. It's all Ukraine war related. It's all China related. So I certainly will seek an update on that. In terms of um, uh, choosing an element of the contract, that's something that we wouldn't necessarily look to if we have particular dates where the contractor is saying that they will meet uh, and they will undertake the work. It will take longer if we um, generally uh, cancel a contract and then have to go out to tender, etc. So uh, certainly something that I'm aware of and it's, we can certainly get some information to you in the next couple of days with regards to the timeframes and, and what is happening on that particular project. Thank you, Mr. Kearsley. Councillor Dack. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, my next question is to the Director of Community Services. Uh, I had an email which was forwarded on from Stephen, and I'm not going to attempt to try and pronounce his last name, uh, who is on the executive of the Keysborough Soccer Club. Uh, the realignment of the pitches which occurred has resulted in uh, the angle of the pitch being put onto an angle, and as a result, there's been a substantial amount of uh, balls being kicked into the canteen, spectators being hit by balls uh, which are being kicked around. Um, they have put a request in to see what options are available in terms of uh, some additional fencing installation to try and protect spectators being hit. Um, but I just want to find out, one, what options we may have available in terms of even a potential mesh or something like that just to stop the balls flying in the event with the, re with the realignment. Ms Burden. Uh, thank you for raising that. Um, through you, Mr Mayor, I believe officers have met with uh, Stephen um, and have been working on a solution, but I'll provide you with further update on that. I'll have to check into it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Bedin. Councillor Dark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just another question to the Director of Community Services as well. Um, I actually received some messages on uh, Facebook Messenger of an old Facebook group, the uh, Parkfield Reserve Group, from when we very first started doing the master plan. Um, there's been some correspondence about the potential, I believe, rough drawing out of the pavilion and the clubs are uh, having a lot of mass confusion. If we could potentially have a reach out, have a conversation with them in terms of the design, the timeframes for the pavilion and also just what is uh, planned. I believe there has been some queries about the potential for some indoor sports centres or something like that being used as part of the facility. Um, and I've just got some messages which I'm happy to show the director as well. But if we could organise a meeting, that'd be good. Ms Budin. meeting and we'll follow that up. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bedin. Councillor Dack. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. My final question is actually one I'm going to piggyback off what Councillor Milkovich mentioned before. With um, the AMO alerts and the notices which have been published to do with the proposed blackouts, which Sydney has just been hit over the weekend as well, uh, and it's expected that Victoria is going to get hit very shortly. Um, given the businesses that use a lot of power within this municipality and are a substantial part of our economy, they employ a lot of people locally and the, the massive effect that it could have on, say, the Nissan casting plant of losing power and then the cost of then having to deal with that. What, do we have any sort of business plan or is there any sort of conversation being had between Seven uh, and businesses within the city of Great Dandenong where council may advocate for a position to try and free up either some additional gas or power? Uh, I do know we do have the substantially large gas plant down on Greens Road uh, or some sort of just conversation. I'm just somewhat concerned, let's say we have a complete blackout, uh, what then happens to industry? Mr Kearsley. Um, thank you. Well, that, that is certainly front and centre of people in the industry um, throughout Melbourne and Victoria, no doubt, and something that maybe seven wouldn't necessarily have taken up. But certainly SEMA would be, very, would be very interested and very keen. Um, at the end of the day, everyone's reading the new articles that are every day there's something new on this particular issue. Um, even this morning there were some interesting issues about how energy retailers may be not necessarily telling the truth about what they've got available so that they can get compensation when they're asked to ramp up. So there's a whole lot of issues out there. I think it's something that we can certainly, um, perhaps even through our local member, seek some commentary with regards to that and also Julian Hill, our other federal local member, with regards to those discussions that are taking place um, from an industrial point of view and seek an update and some reassurance from them that um, matters will be taken into consideration. Thank you, Mr Kearsley. Councillor Dark. Thank you. Uh, councillors, I'd also like to take a moment to congratulate Sandra George, Council's Manager Business Networking, who was yesterday recognised with a Medal of the Order of Australia in the Queen's Birthday Honours List for her devoted service to manufacturing 
and to the greater Dandenong community. Sandra's list of achievements in the city is quite remarkable, particularly her work in, with the manufacturing sector. Sandra has also helped to raise well over $500,000 for local charities through her organisation of the Mayor's annual charity golf day. Sandra's OAM comes in addition to her many other awards and notable accomplishments in Greater Dandenong. And for that I say thank you and congratulations on this most recent and significant recognition of your wonderful work. Also, councillors, I uh, attended the LG Pro Award uh, that we won last week. We won an award uh, for excellence in the 2022. Uh, this was for the, the WA and Bullen Bullen corroboree in Springvale cer Ceremonial Fire Pit. Uh, we won that award for the First Nations Community Partnership during the LG Pro Awards for excellence uh, dinner on Thursday, the 2nd of June, 2022. Uh, the ceremonial fire pit, uh, titled Wa and Bullen Bullen Corroboree, recognises the cultures of the Wurundjeri and the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. Uh, two large bluestone pieces accompanying the fire pit, symbolising First Nations peoples, ongoing connection to country and references them as the oldest living culture in the world, bringing people together and will be used for permitted activations. In accordance with this intended goal of being an artwork, which was translated knowledge held by both Bunurong and Wurundjeri, the artist Fiona Clark and Ken McKeon created the artwork in collaboration with both groups. The project was significant in bringing the two land councils together to work on a common piece alongside council. The project has created an ongoing partnership with the local traditional owners and the Bunurong Land Council. Also, councillors, uh, some of the functions that I attended, I uh, attended the uh, City of Greater Dandenong Reconciliation Week uh, celebrations with uh, the school children. It was great to have it at the uh, Bullen Bullen Corroboree, uh, which was uh, a lovely uh, ceremony we had. And also in the afternoon, uh, we had plenty of activities for our youth. I also attended the uh, Wasima Friendship Cafe celebrations, who have opened, I think it was about nine cafes within the southeastern suburbs. Uh, the women there do a fantastic job and uh, Council has supported them in the past. I also attended the Buddhist Flower Ceremony fundraiser for the Monash Health Foundation's eight hospitals, uh, which the organiser, Council Lim and the Cambodian community, uh, another successful event. I think Council Lim said over $150,000 uh, was raised, but the ongoing uh, contribution from the Cambodian community is up to about $700,000. So congratulations to the Cambodian community. I also attended the 14th anniversary of the Vietnamese uh, Freedom Day Club uh, at the uh, RSL in Danong, which is always uh, very pleasant uh, to visit the Freedom Day Club. I also attended the opening of the new TIV Construction Training Centre. As the Deputy Mayor uh, said before, this is a, a training facility for uh, females and males, and it was good to see those uh, three uh, females who wanted to become carpenters. So and they were very passionate and uh, I think they were better than the boys, so uh, girls can do exactly what the boys can do. Uh, also attended the uh, Hemming Street Tree Removal Community Consultation, uh, which was great to see that the council and the community can come together and to uh, talk about the trees, uh, 71 trees, and uh, council officers will be reporting back to councillors soon and we can then go and speak to the community on that. Uh, so I think that was great progress done by council as well. Uh, also attended the 8th International Day of Yoga and Wellness Walk, uh, which is fantastic, which I'd never done yoga before. And uh, I had a mat and everybody came to the Harmony Square and uh, it was great to do um, the stretches, which I think uh, was not, not that hard. Normally it's better than running or something like that. So uh, I encourage uh, people uh, to take up yoga because it's pretty easy and it uh, makes you feel good once you finish. So uh, it was pretty good. I also attended the Walk of Unity in Faith in Dandenong. It was great to um, meet up with all the local churches in Dandenong and do a walk. And uh, they prayed for, uh, for councillors and council officers and the people of Greater Dandenong. And it was great to be part of that walk as well. Uh, I also uh, visited the Keysborough Gardens Primary School with uh, Councillor Garrard. Um, 
uh, was education on composting, uh, which was good to see the children uh, get their hands uh, dirty. And, and also, uh, Councillor Garrett and myself actually had to dip our hands in, in, the, in the, and uh, help the kids. Uh, so it was a great way to uh, educate the young kids in composting. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy, uh, citizenship ceremony. It was great to have a citizenship ceremony again uh, last fortnight. Also attended the Rotary uh, Club of uh, Springvale City, the unveiling of the Rotary International Peace Pole at Calester College, uh, which was great um, to visit uh, Calester College and have that peace pole in their front yard. And it was great to meet up with uh, the students there as well. Also attended the uh, Tavu Day celebrations, uh, which is a Fiji Tavu is welcoming, uh, where 14 provinces of Fiji came together to celebrate uh, Fijian people, but also Australian people together. So that was great to visit them as well. Uh, Councillor, uh, Mr. Benny's got some questions taken on notice at the last council meeting. Uh, yes, Mayor, there were 13 councillor questions taken on notice at the last meeting. They've all been answered. Uh, and those answers will be included in the minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr Benny. Item 7, urgent business. If there's no urgent business, I declare the meeting closed at 8.25pm. Thank you for your attendance.